Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Vijay and I am a Microsoft MVP specialized in SharePoint. In this video, we will discuss what is a PowerShell array. So basically, we use a PowerShell array to store collection of items or the elements we say, and uh, we can store any type, maybe the same type or a different type also. For example, in an array, we can store integer values as well as we can uh, store mixed values like integer or string or object type and uh, it can contain uh, one or more items that uh, as I said it can be same or different types each array item uh, will have an index and the index will start from zero so if there are four items in in the um, uh, in the array then the first item index will be zero then it will be one two three uh, so the four item will be zero one two three uh, index now we will see how we can create an array so i'll use a powershell iac for that uh, so i'll open my powershell iac so you can see here powershell iac i'll run as administrator mode i'll just click on yes and uh, here we can i'll just click on new item uh, new document here new script and here we, we we can declare the array so how we can declare is we can have a variable so we can declare a variable uh, with dollar symbol so for example dollar x um, i'll put an assignment operator or equal to sign and then i can define array like this uh, array elements like this for example here if you'll see uh, i will put the elements like this so the array will now having these four elements on that if I will actually run it and then I'll just print uh, this dollar $x. So if we'll run it, you can see here it is showing me the array elements, which is 2, 4, 5, and 6. By default, when you will actually uh, define a array type, then if you have not defined the type exactly, for example, here we don't define whether it is a string array or integer array, then in, the, in that case, it will be the array will be of type object type. And how we can get this uh, you will be able to get it by using the method which is known as dot get type for example here i will say get type uh, you can see here this is uh, the get type and if i'll run it it will actually show me that the uh, array is of uh, object type so uh, by default if you not define then it will be of type object type Apart from that also, as I said, we can uh, create a mix of uh, array uh, variables, for example, or array elements, you can say. For example, here, if you'll say, I will uh, put two, and then I will put here my name like this, and I can also uh, um, write any value uh, like this, you can add it. So if you'll run it now, uh, you can see here, So you can see here i'll just put, close the bracket and if i will now uh, print this array value then you can see here it is showing me the elements two and this time it is a string and then again five and uh, then array now we can uh, define the integer array for example if i want to make this type this array as an integer array then i i will do like this so you can put square bracket and then you can say int uh, 32 and uh, you can end square bracket like this so once you declare this as an integer array then we can put integer values here we cannot put string values so you can see here i put integer values so if you'll run it it is giving me integer values and if i will now try to retrieve the get type then it will uh, give me uh, that the array type is an integer type so if i if you will go here you can see here the type is int32 so this is how we can declare as integer array same way we can also create string array for example in this case i can actually make uh, it as a string array so i'll put here a uh, string here you can see here i can just put string here and on this you can actually you can define a little different way also uh, for example if you want to uh, declare a uh, a blank array or uh, or a uh, empty array which you can say you can define like this so you can put in the bracket like this uh, and then you can assign into a variable so in this case also 
in this uh, uh, integer or in this array string array if you'll see here i can put uh, the elements in single quotes so for example here i can put uh, these three values here if you look at here i'll put here uh, share point uh, uh, 2013 i can put uh, 2016 um, let me just put here you can see here i can put 2016 i can put 2019 and then finally i can put one more element here uh, and i can put uh, sharepoint online as well i can see here and uh, in these cases if you will see um, now if you will uh, do the get type then it will actually give you um, um, the type as a string array so if you'll you can see here now it is returning as a string array you can see here uh, next thing what we can do is there are couple of uh, um, very uh, properties that are available which we can use and we can uh, retrieve uh, retrieve the values for example in this case uh, if you'll see here i can get the count or we can uh, retrieve various elements from that so for example in this case uh, if you will see here uh, if I want to retrieve all the values, then I can uh, uh, just uh, type like this. For example, uh, the variable name, whatever the variable array name we gave here. So if I will run it, as I said before also, it will uh, give you all the values. Now, sometimes what happened is you might want to retrieve the first element. For example, here uh, we can retrieve elements based on the array index. So I will come here, I can put zero. So if I'll put zero, uh, then it will give me the item which is having uh, which is presented in the zero index and in this case it is share point 2013 so if you'll see here now you can see here it is returning me 2013 and if i if i'll put uh, three uh, then you can see here it is returning me share point online because uh, it will start from zero one and two and three so there's three um, elements you can get it here if you want to retrieve a uh, range of elements for example here i want to retrieve one to uh, two so uh, in this case what will happen is it will give me uh, the, the items which are presented in, in this range for example here it is one and two but here also you can put three so that means it will return me from zero from one index to the third index so if i'll run it you can see here it is returning me 2016 2019 and online because those these are the range um, on this range these are the elements uh, presented in the those index we can also get the last uh, element from this array for example in this case on the sharepoint online whatever the last element if you'll put minus one then it will give you the last element so if we'll run it now you can see here it is giving me sharepoint online which is the last element from this array anytime if you want to add elements to an existing array then we can use the plus equal to operator so in this case if you'll see here suppose i want to add uh, one more element to it so i will say plus equal to and then we can have the values here so in this case suppose i will add an index let's say so now if i will try to print it then it will show me all the elements so um, this is how we can add it so i'll just paste it here now if i'll run it we can see here there's four elements because we added one more elements here and if you want to retrieve the count so you can see here there's a property which is known as the count and then if you'll run it it will show you five elements because we have four elements before and one elements we have added so it is four elements Anytime if you want to also update the values, for example, in this case, if you want to update uh, the second one, let's say it is SharePoint 2016, I want to make it to SharePoint 2010, for example, then in those case, what we can do is we can actually uh, set the value uh, based on the index. For example, in this case, um, let me remove it. So in this case, the index is zero and one. So I can put like this. So in the one index, I want to update the value to, for example, I will put it here, uh, SharePoint or SP2016. If you'll see here, I'll put like this. And then if I will try to print the values, then you can see here it is showing me SharePoint 2013, then SP2016, not SharePoint 2016, because we have updated the value here. Uh, now similarly uh, we can also uh, uh, get all the elements by using a for loop so 
uh, for each so you can use a for each loop and then we can actually uh, print the values here so how we can do this is uh, for example in this case i will write for each and uh, then i will put uh, so for each and then if i will put dollar for example item in and uh, our collection so or our array so this is our array and uh, we will uh, read the item here so i will we, we we can simply read the item here you can see here we put the item and if i'll run it now you can see here in this for each loop we were able to retrieve the items so this is how we can also use the for each loop and we can get so and uh, finally if you want to merge two arrays for example here uh, uh, we have one array and then uh, for example let me just delete it we have one array this one i will uh, take one more array for example here i will make it to y and in this case i will put just simply sp 2013 sp 2016 and then sp 2019 and sp online so in this uh, scenario also we can this is a second array and i can actually take a third array and then i can uh, add or we can merge these two arrays so i will take a string array so if you'll see here i will take a third array which is the z and i will say equal to our first array which is dollar x and uh, i will take plus and then dollar y so when you will take this then it will actually become a uh, the array will be merged and if you will print the third one the z array or our merged array so we will be able to see all the results let's run it so you can see here once you run it it is returning uh, from the first array and then these values are from the second array and anytime if you want to remove uh, the array items then uh, uh, there is another way of removing this because uh, um, we we can uh, we cannot remove directly uh, from the arrays because power cell arrays are immutable so we cannot even uh, add or remove elements from the array so what we have to do is we have to actually make a, a new array with some filter criteria on that so those those way we will be able to um, able to remove it or uh, an element from the array for example in this case uh, let's say i'll keep my x array here so in this x array suppose we want to do another array uh, so i will put data uh, and uh, i will make it uh, as dollar x or our first array and then there is a pipeline symbol so we'll filter the items basically and uh, i'll put a question mark here and then we will filter here so in this case if you'll see here i will say uh, dollar uh, dollar underscore which is basically the current element not equal to uh, we will take uh, let's say uh, 20 or sharepoint online let's say we will i will take this one so you can see here now we took this and if i will try to print uh, this data uh, basically oops so i'll just copy this here so you can see here now if i'll run it it will show me three elements it is not showing me sharepoint online so if you want to actually remove it so uh, if you are taking array list then we will see in the future videos that time you will be able to remove it uh, by using a, a method but here if you'll see we have to actually create a new array by uh, removing that uh, the elements which you don't want and this is how you you will be able to um, able to uh, remove an item from an array by using this condition and finally uh, we can delete an array uh, by using uh, the remove item so if you'll see here there will be remove hyphen item and on this uh, basically we will take a variable and what is the variable name is our dollar x this is our variable name and uh, sorry not x like this and in this case if we'll actually run it so the the array will be uh, you can remove this array so this is how we can remove it 
in fact if you'll try to print these values now for example i'll go here i'll put it and i'll uh, run it you can see here there's no element it is not displaying any element from there because the array itself has been removed so this is how we can work with powershell array uh, some more videos will come in the uh, in the future videos will i'll upload some more videos on on onto this and if you like our videos kindly subscribe to our channel and also these are our websites to visit us and then these are twitter handles follow us and linkedin and facebook pages to like us so thank you and have a nice day